a shooting involving you know, multiple people. Right. And then I thought later on, I to find it's a, a gay bar. Yeah, right. And, uh, and I was like, oh my God, is he gay? As a scare, I was like, oh my God, shit, is he gay? Hmm. And he's not gay. So it's like, so it's, it's, well, you guys had had conversations about that. You you were. Oh, yeah. So like, you, 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 I was you adamant. Him, yeah, you were to adamant that gay is, gay adamant, is bad. Happening. I yeah. this, I'm a Mormon. I'm a conservative Republican. And we don't do gay. We don't do yeah. gay. We don't do gay. Yeah. I can't get answers from the attorneys, really, but they're saying that some of these, you know, this, it's involving a gay bar or some shit. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the heck you do. You have a gay bar. Um, I don't know what to do. Well, he's accused of going on a mass shooting at a gay bar and killing five people. Colorado. Okay, well, well, that's not shit. I'm excused of doing that. I, I, I'm surprised he's not gay. I don't know if he'd say that, but he's not gay. <laughs> That was the actual response from the Club Q shooter's father upon learning that his son murdered five people and injured dozens more. I'm just glad he's not gay. He actually said that. He's actually relieved to know that his son is only a mass murderer, but not gay. Oh, thank God he's only a mass murderer. Because if he were gay, then I don't know if I'd be able to forgive him. What What is even happening? I don't have words for this one, folks. I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to process this information. Imagine learning that your son committed an atrocity at a gay bar, and your first question is, oh my god, why is he at the gay bar? Is he gay? Not, why was he murdering people? Again, no words. Some things just leave me speechless, and uh, this is one of those instances. And certainly I've been shocked over the years by American politics and by things that I've heard other Americans say. That certainly takes the cake for me. That is one of the most shocking things, and I genuinely don't even know how to respond to that, but I will say that knowing who his father is makes it abundantly more clear why this individual did the shooting. More from this piece of shit, and specifically what he taught his son. I praised him for violent behavior really early. I still say that it works, that it's, in, it's instant, and, it, and you'll get immediate results. And you'll always give you ones you're good at fighting. Had you taught him more tolerance, let me no. be direct. Do you think, uh, you know, it, he would have been more tolerant of gay people? Apparently. I think that my anti-gay, anti-schmatic, uh, they come from conservative uh, writing, I'm a conservative extraordinaire, and I've been very vocal about that. It was, I, I support Randy Lapel, her, her Instagram, I love Randy Lapel. He's a good American, I hope he'll be president someday. Um, Randy who? Uh, Randy Lapel. Oh, Randy. 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 Lopel. Randy. That's a good man right there. That's a that's the best man for the job. Mm -hmm. uh, it was okay to be gay, you know. It's like he says, but now it's like it's, it's cool to be gay. It's not. It's, I think it's not cool at all. I think it's um. My, my opinion about gays is that it's just not okay. I think we should stand up against homosexuality. So he taught his son that violence is good, and gays are bad. But yet. I just can't figure out why he would do something like this, why he would commit an atrocity like this and target LGBTQ plus people. And it turns out the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because according to one of the shooter's friends, he was deeply homophobic. The Daily Beast explains, Xavier Kraus, 23, who said he once considered Aldrich a friend, also told the Daily Beast that the 22-year-old suspect in the mass shooting at the LGBTQ club, Club Q, that killed five people and injured 18 more on Saturday, frequently used the word F-slur. There would be times where he and his mom would get into fights, arguments, because he would be saying hateful things about whoever he was angry with, Kraus told the Daily Beast. He said things sometimes that probably should should have been alarming to me. He used the term F-slur a lot. Most of the time, it came from a place of anger. Yeah. So this story has really been haunting my mind because it feels like this is the culmination of months of right-wing incitement against this community. And all throughout the year, we've seen harassment at pride events, drag events. We've seen stochastic terrorism lead to bomb threats against children's hospitals uh, multiple times last week. And it just... They're not stopping. That's the thing that really is sickening. The right is continuing to demonize queer people just days after an event where queer people were targeted. Now, some more details about the father here uh, for the Club Q shooter, courtesy of the Daily Beast. 
because we learn that he's very clearly a moral man. A defense attorney called Sunday night and told Brink, who lives in Southern California, that Anderson Lee Aldrich was under arrest for the massacre at Club Q. They started telling me about the incident, a shooting involving multiple people, Brink said Tuesday in an interview outside his San Diego home with CBS 8. Brink, who has appeared in such films as My Milf Boss 8, I Want to Get Titty Fucked, and Latina Slut Academy, told CBS 8, You know Mormons don't do gay. Right. Mormons don't do gay, but My Milf Boss 8? That's A-OK. This is very clearly a moral authority here, who taught his son very well, right? Now, all signs point to this being a hate crime. All signs. There's an abundance of evidence that this is indeed a hate crime. But some individuals on the right are trying to shield themselves from culpability, specifically with regard to the rhetoric that they use because of one detail that we learned. The Daily Beast continues, in a court filing Tuesday, lawyers for Alderic, who in 2016 changed his name from Nicholas Franklin Brink to escape his father's sordid past, said Alderic is non-binary, saying they use they-them pronouns. However, booking records list Aldrich's gender as male. Additionally, in text messages from the day of the shooting, which were shown to the Daily Beast by a source close to Aldrich, Aldrich's mother referred to her son as he and him. So, first of all, this doesn't change anything. All signs still point to this being a hate crime, even if this individual is non-binary. But I'm not buying that, because his defense attorneys are the ones saying this, and his defense attorneys are trying to defend him. Therefore, perhaps if he is a member of the community, then by saying that he's non-binary with no evidence of that, they could drop the hate crime charges. I'm not really sure, but it doesn't change anything. I mean, we see the way that Jamie Mitchell, gays against uh, groomers founder, is explicitly demonizing her own community with fascistic rhetoric. Now, perhaps this was an issue of a scorned lover, but all signs point to this being a hate crime. We, we just don't know. We don't have all the details. All that we can do is work with incomplete information and deduce that it is very, very likely that this individual did this out of hate. So... I mean, I don't know what else to say. Seeing the father kind of confirms that it is indeed the case that this individual was raised to think that hate is good and that gay people are bad. The shooter used hateful rhetoric himself, and that's where we're at. Either way, it's just it's so sad because we're talking about the shooter when lives are gone. And we talked about them the other day on this show. But it's, it's still so sad. One of the victims in particular, her story stuck in my mind because she was a trans woman who was basically a mother to a younger trans woman. And that younger trans woman, Natalie Bingham, says that she doesn't even know if she'd be here if it wasn't for, you know, that victim being the mentor to her. And on the night that she died, she felt beautiful. She was FaceTiming with her friends saying how beautiful she felt. So she left this world feeling beautiful, feeling complete. And I don't know why that story kind of just like stuck on my mind, but it really did. I mean, all of the stories are deeply sad, but that story really, I don't know. I guess it like, it stuck with me because she finally found her peace and evolved into her true self and felt beautiful when perhaps all her life she was attacked. And to see her happiness and that spark be taken away from all of us be zapped from the world it just feels so so sick and all of these people who were the victims there's such a good underlying quality about all of them described by their family members that just makes it feel like we were really robbed of such good people one of the uh patrons who was murdered was a straight woman and she tried to help children find uh homes if they were in foster care tried to get them situated with permanent homes these are all really good people and they were taken because of this psychopath. It's just, it's so sad. And I just hate that this doesn't feel like the end of the violence against queer people. It seems like just the start of more violence because the right is not changing their rhetoric. They're not stopping with the uh, stochastic terrorism. They're not stopping with the lies and the demonization. And now we're to the stage where they're justifying and rationalizing violence against queer people because of all of the evil that they're doing. 
That's the words of Jamie Mitchell, founder of Gays Against Groomer. She said this on Tucker Carlson's program, and it just it's really sickening to know this. Look, people just want to survive. They just want to live. Stop demonizing queer people. Leave them alone. They just want to exist. And you should mind your own business. If you don't like queer people, fine. But leave them alone. Stop demonizing them. Stop lying about them. But the right can't stop because this is something that is a grift for them. Right? It's something that gets them views and clicks and clout. And it helps Republicans win if they could use this as a wedge issue. So this community has to suffer so long as the right chooses to demonize them. And they've never stopped demonizing them. But just the way that it's ramped up over the course of the last six months should really worry everyone because we're at the stage where their rhetoric, rhetoric is genocidal. And that's really concerning to me. But when you see the things that they say and the father of the shooter here, I, I just don't find this surprising that it happened. It's just so sad. That's, like, that's all I can say. I, I just feel nothing but heartbreak for the victims and their families.